Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room and on today's video I have something planned that is ooky, spooky, kooky, and creepy. We will be making a quilt out of human flesh. Just kidding, but what we are doing is working with x-rays. This is a brain, I think. Let me be clear on what we're doing. I have previously made a video of cyanotypes. This is my cyanotype quilt. You can watch that video to see how I did it in the past. But today, we are going up to the next level. In this instance, I bought online pre-treated fabric. Now it's time for me to treat my own fabric because I felt like I can just do my own thing that way and do cooler stuff. And what are we doing? X-rays. Now I went online and I bought this whole pile of x-rays, human x-rays, and I think there's a dog in here. I was concerned when I had this idea, I don't want like people's broken bones and their cancer tumors and everything because that's like, I really don't feel like taking like their tragic day and turning it into a cute quilt. So these x-rays are not exactly that. In the first place, this pile on top was produced for the education of children. Royal Co. True to Life Human X-rays. And it said on here that this was the real X-ray of a human male. So this was made just for, you know, he wasn't injured or nothing. He was just, you know, this is his foot. It's kind of gross. So I have his whole body here. And then some of these in the pile were produced to be used as movie props. They were made for Grey's Anatomy or House or whatever. This is the dog. I think. I think it's a dog. And then another stack of them was people on Etsy. Now, people on Etsy are very weird, I should know. People on Etsy selling their own x-rays for, like, people who like weird oddities and stuff. I'm okay with using that because that person offered up their own x-ray. And it said that in the listing. This is, it took me a long time because it's not all that common. So I'm okay with using their own x-rays that they're selling. And then I also got a hold of a whole stack of dental x-rays. These are teeth. And I was okay with using teeth. I feel like dental x-rays are kind of like pretty routine. Like I get it done like every year or twice a year or something. So that's fine. Guys, I like to make fun quilts and goofy quilts. And although this one is ooky and spooky and kooky and creepy, I don't want the vibe of people's injuries and their tragedies and stuff for my quilts. So we're not doing that. Matter of fact, and this person sold me their own teeth. This was on eBay. Some of these people have braces. So my first step, because we are on Friday night right now, I need to mix the solution together. So I'm gonna do that, then we're gonna come back for the next step. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I need to do is mix the solution. I'm gonna make it in this Tupperware container because I think that's gonna be most conducive to dipping the fabric in. I wanna soak the fabric. A lot of the instructions have you paint the fabric, but you can soak it too. And I think that's gonna be my best bet. So let me read the instructions here. Okay. <sighs> Guys, I really struggle with reading directions. I have to really concentrate. Dissolve the chemicals in water to make two separate solutions. Add ammonium ferric citrate to water into one container and potassium ferrous, ferrous iodide to water in another. Stir with a plastic spoon until the chemicals dissolve. Mix equal quantities of each solution together in a third container. I needed three containers. I thought I only needed one. So I need to make solution A. Guys, we're gonna improvise, okay? I don't have a third container. I have two containers. But I refuse to believe that you need a third container because the chemicals are gonna mix. So we can mix them in one of the containers that we already used, okay? I'll mix the two different solutions in their own containers, but then I'm gonna mix them in one container, and it'll be the one that I've already used. 25 grams of ferric, wait a minute, hold on. Face mask, DIY style. It says that you need a, I have a COVID mask and rubber gloves. Okay, so we're ready. Solution A is ferric ammonium citrate. This goes in here. 100 milliliters of distilled water. This is distilled water. Guys, that's not enough. 
Wait a minute. I'm supposed to work in the dark. <laughs> I think that'll be fine. The I have these lights for filming that are probably too bright and fluorescent and everything. I actually think that probably would have been fine, but I'm gonna be extra safe. And now I just have the one light bulb above me. Um, so that's our solution A. Next we're meet solution B. Okay, this is fully dissolved. I'm not quite ready to use it yet, so I'm not gonna mix it. What I'm gonna do is put it in a cupboard. No light will be able to get into the cupboard. And when I'm ready, I will mix them. Only when I'm ready, because I think there's a kind of a time limit. I think right now we're good. It's not gonna hurt to leave them like that. The solution is cooking in the Tupperware. And uh, this is the fabric I'm gonna use for it. This is just white fabric. So what I need to do is go through the x-ray pile and select my favorites. And then use those to cut out my fabric that I want. Okay guys, I think you probably get the idea. I'm gonna cut the rest of the x-ray fabric out on, off camera and then I'll be back when I'm ready to process the fabric into the dye. Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Kitchen. We're in the kitchen and we are ready to treat our fabric with the chemicals. These are the chemicals, let me actually mix them. This is how I'm stirring it. I don't wanna get a utensil dirty because once you use the utensil on this, you shouldn't use it for food again. What I'm gonna do, guys, is take the fabric, dip it in, wring it out, put it on the cardboard, and then place the cardboard in here. I don't have any like pots and pans or nothing. I don't cook. And I need to label what each one is so that I know which x-ray it pertains to. I guess that's good enough, I don't know. So, I'm just gonna start. Wait a minute, again with the lights. We have too many lights. I hope this is even gonna work. I need to treat the fabric and then let it dry for about 24 hours. As you can see, some of the fabric is overlapping and I think that probably would have been fine except that it caused it to dry slower. The treated fabric needs to be completely dry when you put it in the sun, otherwise whatever design you put on it will completely wash out and that's a problem that I will have later. I just needed to wait longer for it to dry. I didn't film preparing these because I did it in my completely blacked out dark bathroom. For whatever reason, these were extremely sensitive to the light and they were even changing color right before my eyes as I was working and I had to cover every last bit of light. The lights in my house didn't affect the pre-treated fabric that I bought for the last video at all, but this time any light was affecting these. I placed the dried or should have been dried treated fabric on the board and then I put the x-ray on top of that and then a piece of glass on top of that to hold it flat. I left it in the sun for different times to experiment, sometimes 5 minutes, 10, 15. There was not a magic number of time because it depends on how sunny it is. This is... These are the good ones. I guess there are six and these ones turned out pretty good. Over here, these are the ones that turned out not so good that I may not use. I mean, this one really didn't even turn out at all. This is just kind of a blob. These look like eggs, this is the skull. I don't exactly know what I did wrong. My suspicion is that I didn't wait long enough with the chemicals on the material. So I packed up, I put it back in the dark space, and we're gonna try again tomorrow after having waited an additional 24 hours. I say an additional, it's not actually been 24 hours. So you're supposed to wait longer, but I was like, what's additional time I'm gonna do? We'll see, I mean, these could be better. I'm happy with them, but they could be better. 
they're splotchy and that's because the splotchiness is unlikely to go away tomorrow when i do it because it's really hard not to ever let them hit uv even if it's just for a second um and also this is for like if there was water on it like and it was still wet in that spot um i'm really okay with all that stuff i feel like it gives it kind of a like a creepy vibe that's that i'm tired i need a shower i've been in the sun i'll be back tomorrow and do more of these okay okay guys it's the second day and this is what we have this these here are the best of mostly bad ones this section here it turned out really good all of these that i have on this side of the design wall turned out to be like they're just blobs or like they're just not clear and they don't even read x-ray um i've used up all of my fabric that i have for this so this is not enough for me to make my quilt i think it was like mostly successful there's a lot of pitfalls in doing this number one you can't let any light in because as i'm working the light was touching some parts and this is what happens you know what this is from this blue section down here on this pelvis that is from the sliver of light that peeked in through the cupboard I forgot to, or I didn't think it mattered. I didn't think that much light was gonna get through. But right where the edge of it was, that's where this one was, and it was um, like that. And these are splotchy, and this is like very splotchy. The splotches, that's what caused the splotches, was that a little bit of it got exposed to light. As I was working, I would see it turn blue and frantically try to block out any light that was shining in, but it wasn't always easy to block out all of it. And then, you know, I don't have like a dark room. I have Dave's craft bathroom. That's that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and order another pack of the, the pre-treated fabric pieces because I think that's gonna be my best bet. I will use these and then I'll just add to it the ready-made ones that I can buy online. So I live on an island, which means there's no overnight shipping, which means that I need to pack these up because it's gonna be two weeks until I get the package. So I will be back, video magic. All right, guys, we're back. It's been two weeks, and I have the Amazon package here. I have purchased 30 of the 8.5 by 11 sheets, and this is the mural sheet. This is 5 feet by 7 feet. And so what we need to do now is we're going to set up in Dave's craft bathroom and make more of our cyanotypes. These are the ones from the last time. These are both the good ones, and the bad ones are in here too, I think. I'm gonna use the bad ones in a franken backing. So let's get started before the sun goes down. Let me get everything together in Dave's craft bathroom. This time around, you can see what I'm doing, and that's because when I used this brand before, the artificial lights in my house did not affect them at all, and it's only a light bulb in my bathroom, it's not a window. I googled it and it turns out that most light bulbs emit at least a tiny bit of UV light and for whatever reason the ones I treated myself were so sensitive that they were affected by even that small amount. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. Because I think the sun is not shining bright enough today. I might have to do it on a different day. The fact that the edges are not even blue really uh, tells me that they weren't in the sun long enough. I think I'm probably just gonna do this on another day because it's not really sunny enough. Well, it's three more for the after quilt. So this is today's yield. And as you can see, there are only 10. And even of those 10, this one I redid. And then the skull I redid. As I was getting ready to do the mural one, it started pouring rain and it is calling for rain for the rest of the week. I don't think the sun's going to come out for a while. They're calling for a big storm. Tomorrow is Sunday, so during the week I can't do it. I work. If I don't finish it today and tomorrow, I'll have to wait until next weekend. There's no guarantee the sun will be shining next weekend either. It was pretty frustrating that I could only work on the weekends because there was a string of weekends where the sun just didn't shine, and I was at the mercy of that. You can actually buy special UV light bulbs and set this up inside your house, but I didn't choose to do that. I just pressed weekend after weekend until I had enough. So now I'm arranging them into a layout and I sew them up with white sashing strips.
All right, guys, it's time for an update. In the time since I last filmed, the x-ray quilt has become a drawer UFO. And the reason is I made my 100 days quilt from the first video I ever did. And in that quilt, I used a couple of the cyanotypes in that. I made one block that had actual x-rays of bones in it, and I made another block that had a scrap from the first cyanotype quilt that I did, um, one that said, I wouldn't be surprised if we never saw Denise Richards again. When I washed that quilt, it completely washed away. The x-ray. The x-ray block is completely white. And then the Denise Richards one is like, it turned into this kind of ugly tannish brown. So um, obviously that's very concerning. For that to happen, what's gonna happen to this? I would really hate to have done all that work just to have it wash away and disappear. So I did one experiment. I have these here, I took a picture of them before, I washed them, and this is them now. It's, it's really weird. Because, like, this one held up pretty well. This completely went white. And the thing is, I can tell here, you probably can't see on camera, but I can tell which ones were the pre-treated fabric and which ones I treated myself because it's completely different fabric. This is the cotton that I treated myself. These didn't hold up well, the pre-treated ones. So, in one sense, it's like, okay, I did it right whenever I pre-treated the fabric. Because that one turned out okay. It did fade a little bit, but it did not fade as much as the pre-treated ones. Now, none of this makes sense because I washed that whole original cyanotype quilt and it turned out just fine. It didn't fade even one tiny bit. The next thing we look at is the detergent. You cannot use phosphate. Any detergent that has phosphate. I use different detergents. Sometimes I use um, powder detergent, which I think might have phosphate in it, and I think I may have used it on this. I didn't do a very good scientific experiment because I don't remember what detergent I used. And then the Tide says no phosphate on, on the bucket, on the jug of Tide. What I'm gonna do is one more experiment because I have these chunks I sewed the back, uh, I started to piece pieces together for the back. They were ones that, um, look how dirty they look. They're not dirty, that's just how they turned out. That's why they were rejected from the quilt and used for the backing. Um, I'm gonna wash these one at a time. I'm gonna use Tide on one. I'm gonna use the powdered on another and we're gonna see how they turn out. I will be particularly interested. I'm gonna take pictures before and we'll see how they turn out. This one was washed with the Tide liquid detergent and it looks fine. The before and the after look mostly the same. And then this one was washed with Surf brand powder detergent and it is ugly. So obviously, that's the culprit and it must have phosphate in it although i can't find the word phosphate anywhere on the packaging i am going to say that if you get if you need to wash it use tide liquid detergent i probably used the powder on the 100 days quilt so i'm gonna proceed and i am gonna still not wash the x-ray quilt it's just gonna be a wall quilt because i'm satisfied with the way they look and i don't want them to change that's just the tea. I'm just not gonna wash it. I think if you wanna make this, you should definitely make extra and wash them as an experiment. So that's that. I'm gonna proceed with sewing up. I'm still gonna use these panels for the backing for the after quilt because they'll be fine and I, it's even labeled what happens and that'll be a part of the um, backing. So that's fine. So let's continue. I'm using a fleece blanket for the batting and the reason I am is because 
I am not going to quilt it very tightly at all. I don't think that quilting stitches would look good going over the x-rays, so I'm just doing a straight running stitch inside the white sashing with blue embroidery floss. If I would use a regular batting with this little amount of quilting, it would eventually fall apart or get bunched up. So by using this blanket, I don't have to worry about that. I cannot let this quilt be lumpy. I will not let the quilt be lumpy. No lumps, no lumps in this quilt. All right guys, so the quilting on this is done. All the sewing is done, the binding's on. I really like the way it turned out. And I've decided that I am going to wash it in Tide liquid. This is a difficult decision because I did put so much work into it, but the thing is, after my last cyanotype video, so many people commented saying that they wanted to try it. And so I really hate to think that they're trying it because of my video and then their work is destroyed because I didn't go on to show what happens. The T is I want to make a quilt that you can use, which means wash. If you can't wash it, you can't use it. So I need to show what happens when you wash it. I would not do this unless I thought it would be okay. Some of these blocks are actually dirty and I think would benefit, like for example, this hand. It has like splotchiness that I believe will come out in the wash. I think the blue will look bluer and the splotchiness will uh, fade a little bit. Some of these are so dark that for them to fade a little bit, like if this faded, it might even look better. Um, and that's true of many of them. This is another example of one that's really splotchy that I think washing it will do good so I'm, I just have to do it. I don't think it's, it's going to be a disaster. I think we might see some fading. I think the results are going to be good. If I come back with a completely white quilt, well then I've made a white quilt. <laughs> so I'm going to wash it. I'll come back with the results of the experiment. All right guys, that's a wrap on the x-ray quilt. I washed it in Tide liquid detergent and it turned out just fine. And I was, I was actually pretty right in that some of the splotchiness like that on the hand and on this arm has dissipated. Some is still there and some is probably permanent. I don't mind, I think it works for this quilt. And just know that if you want to make a cyanotype quilt, you can wash it in detergent that does not contain phosphate. Tide says on the jug that it doesn't contain phosphate. I washed it in Tide and it turned out fine. 
So, that's all for this video. I love my x-ray quilt. Let me know in the comments what you think. And please come again. <laughs>